Hey guys, welcome back. Anyways, um, so I'm a little down the process already. So to catch you up to right here, um, so what I've got in here is hydrochloric acid, 31.45%, um, and then just your regular store-bought uh, hydrogen peroxide. And so um, that's the, what the liquid is. And so inside of there is my platinum and palladium from catalytic converters. And so this process here is done after you would have already refined it off the catalytic converter itself and then been left with your metals in the filters. And so then when the, you get those filters, you put your filters into this solution and um, you boil it, the hydrochloric acid and um, the hydrogen peroxide, and so then you add hydrogen peroxide like so and um, you'll get a reaction and if you add too much it will foam over and so make sure not to add too much hydrogen peroxide you gotta add it in slow doses and um, uh, your temperature will play into how much it reacts also and so anyways um, so you keep doing this until you don't get much of a reaction and now if your temperature is high every time you add hydrogen peroxide whether there's metals to be dissolved or not it will have a reaction and so um, I forget what the temperature is right off the top of my head but it's right before boiling um, so you can see like I, you can't really tell um, you see how I kind of got a reaction going in there that's about how much boiling you want a little hotter than this just my stir pl hot plate thingy sucks <laughs> um, but so yeah so anyways you keep doing your um, acid and hydrogen peroxide until you get all your metals dissolved and then the next step is to let this cool and filter it and so I'm about to turn this off to let it cool and start filtering it and I'll be back at that point alright so now I'm filtering in um, this I'm just rinsing out with hydrogen peroxide um, into my filter and so then the particulate that's in the, this filter is actually just the um, crushed catalytic converters that have made it through my filters after multiple times and um, so in case you want to test it or whatever you can still like try to redissolve this stuff and that'll prove it to you just in case you think that there is precious metals in that stuff and um it also would be a good idea just to test it in case you haven't dissolved en enough anyways. That way you'd know that you're not losing any. Because, I mean, this palladium's over $2,000 an ounce. So even losing half a gram is losing a lot of money. Especially when you only get a gram or two out of pounds and pounds of shit. So anyways. Um, so I'm filtering this to get the liquid cleared out. And then uh, once this is all filtered, I'll show you what's next. All right, so I'm all filtered and back in here. And so now what I'm doing is, th in this batch, what I'm running is two small bread loaf catalytic converters. And this is they're, both of them are from one vehicle, which is also the first car I've ever seen that had two catalytic converters. But so anyways, um, the average small catalytic converter has like, between three and seven grams of metal in it and so let's just say that it has 10 grams of metal in it proposed so the liquid that's in here I need to get down to around 200 milliliters and so um, when you're shooting to proceed past this step you want about 20 milliliters of, of liquid per gram of metal in solution and so um, the next step is we're going to be adding ammonium chloride to the solution and that will precipitate out the platinum and so the solution at that point has to be uh, have excess of ammonium chloride in it for the next step of preci precipitating out the palladium and this because these two steps separate the platinum and the palladium and so um, that's why the amount of liquid is important to know and the amount of metals is important to know so that way you can make sure you have excess of ammonium chloride in in solution 
to move from the platinum to palladium steps. Alright, so in one of my other videos I have a video of how to make ammonium chloride. And so now you're going to need ammonium chloride and you're going to need to prepare a saturated solution of ammonium chloride. And so what saturated means is it has enough ammonium chloride in water that the ammonium chloride will no longer dissolve into solution. And so um, you need to get a, a saturated solution and add into this. And um, so for me, I need to add about 100 milliliters of a saturated solution to this. And the platinum should start precipitating out. And um, it, it sometimes it can take longer than other times, or sometimes it's really fast. Um, yeah, you can kind of see in there the color change, um, and the color change can be pretty drastic depending on how much um, metal you have in solution. To where, since I only have the two catalytic converters, I'm not expecting a whole lot of platinum. Um, and so, uh, anyways, I need to mix more ammonium chloride solution and I'll be back. Alright, so I've got my um, ammonium chloride into there and it's, I've got enough in there now to where the platinum is precipitating out. And now one thing about it is the platinum precipitates out and it's going to stick to whatever container like it's going to stick to the edges of this and so I just don't have a good container right now because they're all have crap in them or whatever and so you're going to want to use a container that um, is easy to clean out because uh, like I said the platinum is going to stick to the walls of this container and so whatever doesn't though you're going to need to filter out also so I've got my ammonium chloride in here the platinum's precipitating out of solution, and so um, now I, I'm going to wait a few hours uh, for the platinum to precipitate out as much as can, and then um, I'll do a stannous chloride test um, to see if to make sure that I don't have platinum and only palladium. And so at that point, then I'm going to filter it to further separate whatever platinum doesn't stick to the walls out and uh, so once I get to that point I'll be back but alright so what I've got here is one of my flasks with my calcium hypochlorite down in there that white powder and so then in here I've got some muriatic acid it's a little bit used as you can tell with the color, but I'm going to use the muriatic acid to react with the calcium hypochlorite to make chlorine gas to um, run the gas through my palladium solution. And this is after the platinum's been filtered out. And so now you're going to run gas through that solution until it turns green. Um, it'll turn like a lime green ish color. And uh, that has nothing to do with this. Um, even if you use 100% clear muriatic acid, that will still turn green when it's done, um, when it has had enough chlorine gas ran through it to um, precipitate all the palladium out. And so um, I'm doing this outside, and I strongly recommend doing this with a full face mask with chemical respirators on because you can't do this without it. You will literally choke yourself out and if not kill yourself. It is very dangerous. So please do this part very, very safely.
Alright, so you can't really tell it's green, but um, it's pretty green. You can see that's all the palladium in the bottom there. Um, well, it's palladium salt. So until the next one. Just a real quick peek at what it looks like in the filter. Pretty reddish yellow. And uh, as you can see, even, I'm using coffee filters. I'm going to have to filter this again a couple times, probably. Alright, so I've got all my palladium all filtered out after th that last run. And um, so now I'm going to put all these filters into a clean container. And I'm going to cover them with enough ammonia to dissolve all of this. This is all soluble in ammonia, except for the paper, obviously. Um, but so that's going to all dissolve into this regular old ammonia, nothing else. And um, your solution may turn blue, and that's not to be weird or anything like that. So we, I'll do that, and I'll be back. Alright, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to transfer my filters from this container to this container, and then I'm going to add a little bit of ammonia to that container and wring out the filters really good with my hands with, with gloves on. And then I'm going to pour the ammonia that's in here back into this container. Or, well, not back into it. I'm going to pour it from there into there. And then um, continue this stirring for about a half hour or so. I'm going to put a stir bar in it and put it on a, a stir machine. And um, as you can see, my solution has not turned blue, but that's all right. If yours does turn blue, that's also all right. All right, so I've had my mix on here for about a half hour now. And so now I'm going to add 100 milliliters of hydrochloric acid and stir it and then add 20 milliliters more in increments until I get a color change and a precipitation. And the precipitation will be a canary yellow palladium. And uh, so the transition will be very apparent. And so after you do a 20 milliliter increment add, just wait a minute of stirring and then keep doing that until you get your change. And then um, that's when you're ready and let it settle and start filtering. Um, I'll be back at that point. Alright, so as you can see, there's my precipitated platinum chloride. And so, or excuse me, palladium chloride. And so now I'm going to filter this out and then I'm going to calcine it, which is basically I'm going to dry it at about 400 degrees Fahrenheit, which will also like um, brown it per se or turn it black. And um, you don't want to do it too fast because it'll splatter. But so then once it's all dried and color changed, then you can melt it to a button. And that will give you your pure palladium. And that is the whole process, guys. So till next one. Have a good one, guys. I'd like to give a special thanks to Three Tips. Your videos are awesome, man. Keep them coming. Um, you help me immensely.